This is the Italian Real Estate Podcast, here to help you with the ins and outs and basics of Italian real estate presented by ItalianRealEstateLawyers.com. Hello there and welcome to another edition of the Italian Real Estate Podcast presented by ItalianRealEstateLawyers.com. Of course, we are back at it again with Italian attorney Marco Permunian. How are you doing today? Good, how are you? I'm doing great. Thank you for asking. And today, we wanted to get into some more important Italian terminology for purchasing property in Italy. In the past, quite a while ago, we actually did an episode where we got into some very important terminology, but we wanted to get into some more definitions of how to actually define an apartment. What are some of the important words that have to do with the physical space itself rather than in the last episode, we did a little bit more about some of the practical process related to it. But uh, Marco, we've got a list here. And so let's just start at the top of our list that we have and start with the word monolocale. What exactly is that and how does it relate to an apartment in Italy? I think this episode is going to be a lot of fun and very interesting for a lot of people that are searching for properties in Italy because there are all these terms, including yes. non locale, that, that uh, for a lot of people, they don't make sense. So I right. think it's going to be good to explain what they are. And mono locale specifically is basically a studio. Um, so in America, you would define a mono locale as a studio. Mono locale means a property made of one room except for the bathroom of course so the bathroom will be separate but all the rest will be in one room so the kitchen the living room and the bedroom will be in a single room uh maybe separated by some furniture but there's no wall that separates the uh bedroom for the rest of from the rest of the property so that's a mono locale it's it's yeah i think it's good that we're getting into this because also there's a lot of terminology that's used in a similar manner but has a slightly different meaning and i think that really is going to help people understand also uh what they're reading when they see some of these terminologies when they're looking at uh, uh listings um and especially with these next two terms i'm going to put them together because of the way that you, how rooms are counted in italian apartments and that's bi locale and tri locale because you could also have quadri locale and even beyond that but what are these terms and how are the rooms in the apartment actually measured because you mentioned that the mono locale is just a studio but what is a b locale and what is a tri locale so b locale and of course we're talking about apartments uh mostly here b locale means two rooms so a lot of people may wonder okay then two bedrooms and the answer is no it's not a two bedroom apartment it's a one bedroom apartment so there are two different spaces two different rooms and, and one will be the bedroom and one will be the living room. So with the kitchen, of course. And then there will be a third space, which is not counted, which is the bathroom. And a three locale, which translated means three rooms, is actually a two bedroom apartment. So there will be the first bedroom, the second bedroom, the living room area with the kitchen and the bathroom, which again, is not counted. So a three locale is a two bedroom apartment. And so we've been talking a lot about apartments, but what is actually the word for apartment at this point? Uh, that would be appartamento, so that's close enough. It's, it's easy to uh, remember. So appartamento would mean apartment in American English or flat in uh, British English. All right. And so since we already have these words defining what an apartment would be, but what about a house? It's it, I mean, a lot of people might just think of the word casa. Is that correct or is that incorrect? Casa translates into home, so it's you refer to casa uh, as where your where your home is. So even your apartment could be a casa. Like if you say, "Vieni a casa mia," come to my house. Even if you had an apartment, you can say that. However, some people in Italy, um, when they when they think of a casa they will think of a house so a property that is not an apartment so a lot of people will uh, differentiate between appartamento and casa but again it, it depends on uh, what the sentence is and 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 what you're meaning with your sentence so but uh, talking about um the different types of houses that we have in italy uh, like we do in america there are several types of 
houses and the single house is uh, normally called casa singola but then it could be defined also as villa or uh, villetta which is still a single house but it's a i'm not saying luxury but normally it's a higher quality single house that is defined as villa or villetta and you mentioned also that a villa might be a little bit more of a higher end piece of property but i'm just curious if we're talking about like say apartments that like a regular apartment is a just an apartment but what about like a condominium or uh, like a penthouse do those have like a special name attached with them in italian a penthouse which would be an apartment located at the last floor in italian would be called attico which is very similar to the word attic and it's not to be confused with the word attic in english so attico in italian means an apartment that is on the last floor of the building and so also you because we're talking about like these differentiations between these different types of um, like you mentioned villa instead of a casa but are there also other words that define say for example like a detached house or semi-detached house or something like that maybe uh, a little bit out in the countryside like a country home is there anything along those lines that we can get into as well so it's it's very frequent when you're searching for a house in Italy to find the word Villetta a schiera, which means a semi-detached house. So that would be a Villetta a schiera in Italian. And also um, you mentioned uh, a house that is on, in the countryside and that would be Rustico. So it's also very common, especially if you're searching for a house in the Tuscan countryside or, or anywhere else in Italy to find the word rustico, um, which it translated into English is rustic, but in Italian it means a property uh, in the countryside with a view of the countryside. So, and, and normally this kind of property is also built in a certain way uh, so that the aesthetic of this house it, it it really looks a house that is like built a to rustic be house countryside. yes <laughs> so the rustic it's when you're talking about that rustic style it's not or rust rustico you're not just talking about rustic style but it's rustic style and out in the the, the countryside as well then. exactly interesting so now i think since we've gone over really the different types of properties that you'll normally find. But I think since we've covered a lot of what kind of are the defining points of the, the property itself, like what is the property? Is it an apartment or a house or this or that? There are some things that are in Italian when it comes to the inside of the apartment that can actually be a little confusing because uh, in English we have a term called false friends where two words that sound the same actually have a very different meaning. Uh, you can almost understand at the end of the day like you can almost make sense of it but uh, in some cases like for example um there's one word that when you hear as an english speaker camera or camera da letto it's not it's not the the photo camera that you find inside of your house but instead maybe you could explain what exactly a camera or camera da letto is definitely so a camera da letto is a bedroom but when you talk about a camera, uh, you normally mean any room in the property. So when you say how many cameras your house has, you normally mean how many rooms are there in, my, in the property. Even if the formal term to indicate the rooms inside the property is normally locale. So, and we kind of mentioned that before when we were talking about like mono locale, tri locale, bi locale. So when you say how many locali are there in the property, you mean how many rooms are there in mm. the property. So more often you would use the word locale or locali instead of camera is what you're saying. Yeah, exactly, locale is more formal. Okay, I get you. And so, also, when you're talking about the rooms that exist inside of the house, um, is it normal in Italy to have multiple rooms? Is it normal to have like five bedrooms or two bedrooms or office space? How does that normally look in an Italian apartment? So, you know, I think properties in Italy are smaller than properties in America. So I'd say that 
it's very common for properties to have two bedrooms. I think that probably is the average in Italy. So whatever has more than three or even four bedrooms, I think it would be an exceptionally large property in mm -hmm. Italy. And especially if we're talking about apartments in, in a city, uh, especially in the historic part of the city, uh, I think one or two bedrooms is more the norm. As for the office space, it is more common in a detached house or in a single property to have an office space. Um, it's less common in an apartment, especially due to the size of the apartment. And uh, of course, with office space, we normally refer to a room where there's a desk where you can work. And um, it, it's, it's funny because in Italian, office space is called studio, which in American English indicates an apartment with just one room. Right. Or even like a a music studio. It's interesting, like the 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 difference in how these terminologies have a a similar like concept behind them, but a, just a different practical usage um, behind them as well. But another example of another potential false friend is the word giardino. It doesn't necessarily mean garden as we might use it in English. But uh, what does that term mean when you're talking about it in uh, terms of a property in Italy? The giardino. So when you're talking about a giardino, you're normally referring to either a single house or a semi-detached house, which has a front yard or backyard or a yard in general. So all around it, if it's a single house or if it's a semi-detached house, maybe it has a backyard or a front yard, but giardino means yard and it doesn't mean garden in American English. So, for example, if you have like a, a back, um, if you have a balcony on, on the back of your apartment or something and you have like a little mini fruit garden or a mini vegetable garden on there, you're not going to say, oh, on my balcony, I have a garden. What, w what would be the term for that in Italian? Or is there not you, you speak about it in a different way? How does that work? So what you just described in Italian would be called an orto. So it's it's a it's a garden where you grow something, maybe plants or flowers or vegetables, whatever. But that would be called called an orto. So you could have an orto on your balcony, but you can also have one in your giardino then. Of course. That's right. Interesting. Okay, so you can have a garden in your garden while you garden. <laughs> Very confusing, but that's what we're here for. It's just it's a, it's it's interesting because different languages have um, different logic as to how they approach certain things, and I always find it very fascinating. But I guess since we mentioned uh, or I mentioned at least the word balcony, I guess that's an easy one that I'll just translate as balcone. And just on that same topic of balcony, there's also another word in that you can find uh, in Italian called veranda, like a veranda, but a little bit of a, a different meaning there. But something in Italian that I find interesting because it's not necessarily a concept at least that i'm so familiar with in english you have the word for a bathroom and an anti-bathroom antibagno and bagno what exactly is the antibagno that you see sometimes uh, advertised in italy so it's very common in the older buildings where there is a, the bathroom separated from the rest of the apartment or house from um with an anti-bagno so it's a small area uh, that you have to access if you want to get to the bathroom. So there will be a first door that gets you to the antibagno and then a second door that gets you to the bathroom. Now the purpose is to separate the bathroom from the rest of the uh, property. And in the antibagno, you could potentially have the sink there and the rest of the bathroom would be inside the bathroom or the sink itself could be inside the bathroom and the antibagno is just used as a storage or an area that you have to go through to get to the bathroom and the purpose again is to separate the bathroom from the rest of the property. Yeah, that's an interesting concept. I, th I think actually in some ways it makes a lot of sense and it's nice to have a little bit of a separation and a little bit of a separated space unless it's maybe the only bathroom on the property. But moving on, there's another false friend that you sometimes find between Italian and English and that's the word that looks like in English piano, but in Italian it's pronounced piano and has nothing to do with music. Do you want to maybe quickly get into what this word is, what it means, and also a couple of different ways that it ends up being used? Piano in Italian means floor. And of course, when we refer to the ground floor, we refer to uh, the piano terra in Italian. 
whereas the first floor is the floor above the ground floor mm -hmm. um, in Italy. There is a very similar word uh, that is pianerottolo, which is not to be confused with piano, even it's very similar. And pianerottolo means a stairway with a landing. So that would be the pianerottolo in Italian. But the piano itself is just the floor um, on which the apartment is located. And also when in American English you refer to a maybe a four-story building, in Italian there would be a, a building with four floors, meaning quattro piani. But um, also one of these floors could be under the ground, and in which case we're talking about a piano interrato. And specifically when more than the 70% of that floor is under the ground, that's defined as a piano interrato. So in American English, that would be a basement. Um, we also have a semi-interrato floor, which would be a floor that is partially under the ground. And that's quite common in Italian. So you will have windows, uh, like higher windows, and it's common to even have like a bedroom there or some, some, some livable space in an area of the house that is partially under the ground, but with windows. Thank you, Marco. And to continue on with another false friend is uh, interno. It doesn't necessarily mean internal, something internal to the apartment, but uh, instead, what does it mean? So in Italian, when the apartment is uh, in a condominium complex, uh, you refer to the single units as interno, and you're actually referring to specifically the number of your units. So when you say interno uno, interno due, it means like unit one or unit two. So I think it can be translated into uh, unit in American English. And since we're also talking about the, the kind of apartment units, the, the condominiums, generally speaking in Italy, there's also some storage that's included as well with that. And what is that called in Italian? So it's, it's very common in the older buildings. Um, for some reason, in the older condominium complexes, they were always building uh, or selling, I should say, the unit with a storage um, area, which is normally either under the ground or on the ground floor. Um, so you have a completely separate area that is though, uh, legally connected to your apartment only and that you can only have access to. So it's a room for you, which is though normally under the ground or on the first floor. Um, so when you buy the apartment, they will also give you the key of the um, storage if you have one. And that's called cantina in Italian, which is again a false friend. Thank you, Marco. And to round out this episode, I think it'd be also a good idea to uh, talk about maybe two of the most important defining factors, whether a home is for rent or for sale. And then also when we're talking about rent in Italy, um, the monthly payment I know has a different word from when something actually is for rent. So would you mind going over these last three words? Sure. Uh, so the monthly rent in Italian is called canone, canone di affitto. And actually, when we're talking about the word affitto, which means rent, um, so it, it translates into rent. Um, in Italy, a lot of people refer to the, like renting an apartment as affitto, but that's not really proper because affitto, legally speaking, if you look at the civil code, that's only for land, even if it's extremely popular in Italy and common to refer to affitto for houses, but that would be um, locazione and canone, which means monthly rent, it translates into canone di locazione. So when we're talking about apartments, you shouldn't use the word affitto, which you should only use for land, for land but you should use the word locazione. Interesting, because I haven't seen that word used because I, I, I lived in Italy, rented apartments there, but I always saw the word in affitto um, yes. it being used. So that's interesting. And th thank you for that little lesson there. And finally, um, the word that you use when you're selling a house is vendita, or you will see the signs that say in vendita, so for sale, or in affitto for rent. And rent is, again, affitto. Well, Marco, thank you so much uh, for going through all of these words and explaining their meanings and also some of the differences between how they're used in English versus how they're used in Italian. It's been a fun and fascinating episode. And of course, if anybody is needing help with their uh, purchase of an apartment or a home piece of land, whether it's a in vendita, affitto, whatever it may be, how can they get in contact with you and your team? 
people can contact us through our website italianrealestatelawyers.com or give us a call our number is on the website well absolutely fantastic and of course if you're interested in more information like this about moving to italy and getting apartments there uh, and as well as purchasing homes uh, purchasing land whatever it may be be sure that you are subscribed to the youtube channel as well as the audio only podcast but of course If you're subscribed to the YouTube channel, you will also automatically be subscribed to the Italian Citizenship Podcast, another project that Marco and I collaborate on where we talk about legally being able to reside in Italy and where we get into plenty of detail and have a wonderful library of content. And also, if you're interested in more information about living abroad, living abroad as a dual citizen or living abroad as a dual citizen expat, be sure to come over to my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Rafael Di Fuori, where I get into some of the daily details of what it's like to live in another country. You can find me on YouTube through youtube.com slash Rafael Di Furia or the audio only podcast or even on YouTube you can search for Not Your Average Globetrotter and of course Mr. Marco Permunian from ItalianRealEstateLawyers.com thank you so much for making yourself available for this episode of course I'm Rafael Di Furia stay safe and healthy thank you again for joining us for this episode of the Italian Real Estate Podcast and we will see you all next time later thank you 